Welcome to the channel for the future caretakers of resurrected species. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. Oh, hello there. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. My name is Austin. Just like how human, both humans and animals would need an oral or a dentist uh, checkup and treatment, dinosaurs would definitely need that as well. Most herbivorous dinosaurs would present quite a challenge to veterinarians since they both have uh, back teeth and a beak up front, something that no modern day animal has today. And one, one, of, the, one of these dinosaurs would be Triceratops, having the batteries of teeth back here and a, a beak up front here, so it would definitely be a bit of a challenge. Knowledge, of how, knowledge and treatment of how we deal with animals with both calibers, with both, with both back teeth and those with beaks, could be able to help us in understanding how to take care of them. For those of you who don't know, the Triceratops is a dinosaur that lived in Lake Cretaceous in North America. It was around the same size and weight of an African elephant, and it was just as herbivorous as one. It has a curved beak that is mostly designed for plucking rather than crushing, and it has uh, dental batteries that of, of teeth that, that constantly replace each other, about 800 of them. As herbivores, Triceratops are primarily browsers, meaning they prefer to eat from trees and shrubs and the like. Plants that were available to them during the Cretaceous period were mostly ferns and pine trees and palm fronds, along with cycads and other plants. And, the dental de and their dental batteries and many other adaptations have shown that they primarily browse on very fibrous material. Not as much as their central soaring, soaring relatives, but they, but still free fibers all the same. In a captive situation, it's most likely the Triceratops will be fed uh, stuff, feed stuff such as hay, particularly alfalfa, several grains, and pellets, especially pellets designed for moose, since they have a very similar diet. While this this will definitely give them all the nutrition they will need. There is a challenge on, on dental care. You see, as mentioned before, the Triceratops diet consists on very fibrous material. And their teeth, they don't have molars like mammals do. Their dental batteries actually work more like scissors. And they have teeth that continuously replace each other to have a scissor-like way. If they, if they don't get access to very coarse, fibrous materials, these dental batteries can overgrow... Can, can get can get out of proportion, much like elephants do when they don't have hard food available. There is a way that you could be able to solve this. One of the ways you could be able to do this is to is to often provide them with browse. This can range from uh, tree branches from uh, non-toxic trees to even palm fronds. This would be able to not only replicate natural behavior, but it will be able to give them very very fibrous materials so that they can be able to help with their dental batteries. While this will definitely help to keep, keep your triceratops healthy by like nutritional standards and even uh, orally, it's not always a, a set thing. They need, in order for it to be a set thing, they will need browns all the time. And there will be times you will not be able to get all the browns that you need. Especially depending on where you live, like the seasons, availability, all that. There will be times where you will have to get your hands dirty and actually physically take care of the animal's dental batteries itself. But this can be tricky. This is primarily because, like mentioned before, we do not have any animals, at least large animals in the in the 21st century, that have analog that are analogs to this. For example, ungulates, like horses, have molars that continuously grow. Elephants will replace their teeth, though via conveyor belt style. With this, with the Triceratops a unique uh, dentition, it would take a lot of trial and error. But I would imagine that grinding them down or floating them like we do with horses could perhaps be a way to help deal with this. Along with dental batteries, we also got to march out for the beak. Much like 
much like uh, with our fingernails, beaks are consisted of keratin, and they continuously grow. This is a con this is a welfare factor that's often dealt with with like with birds and tortoises. And now, and then that in the wild, they will normally do this by trimming their beaks against uh, rocks and other coarse materials. In captivity, we can provide them with uh, large coarse rocks and for them to be able to do that. But we can also provide them with calcium blocks. As we see, this one is already being used up by a tortoise. This will not only help them be able to trim their beaks, but it can also provide them the extra calcium they would need. So, but since we don't have any calcium blocks for something that's the size of an elephant, these will have to be custom made, or at least, at least, or at least a company will need to be dedicated to making them. But even if we do that, there is a catch. This is because of stereotypical behavior. In the wild, the Triceratops, much like other large herbivores today, would spend hours upon hours of browsing and feasting. And if, and if they don't get much enrichment, much uh, mental activity, they can develop bad habits. One of them is very similar to what horses can, can get, called cribbing, which means that they'll just simply nod and try to trim their beaks on on a bar this could definitely cause some problems like over 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 trimming of the beak and even uh, zinc poisoning if there's any zinc on the metal you're using so enrichment for the triceratops is definitely a must this will also be a reason why using electric fencing to contain a triceratops would not be a good idea Though that will be explained in a future video about Triceratops enclosures. As you can see, uh, Triceratops oral hygiene and health is definitely going to be tricky for, for, for a paleo zookeeper, especially since we do not have a modern day analog for this. However, the Triceratops well-being is of utmost importance to the paleo zookeeper and must be met. Thank you for watching this video. I always have fun on theorizing on how to take care of de-extinct animals in captivity, and I hope you always enjoy listening to them as well. Next video will be a rewilding what-if scenario involving Smilodon, and where they're going to be rewilded to, you're going to have to wait until the video comes up. If you like what I do and want to support me, please be my patron on Patreon. Here you can be able to see things from illustrations to, few, to previews for future videos. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. Adios!